Hi everyone, it's Jeff from Avada here. In this video, we'll be looking at how to set up a blog in Avada. There are several ways to do this, but today I'll be showing you the most flexible and convenient method for setting up your blog in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Okay, let's begin. WordPress has been around for a long while, and it actually began life as a blogging platform long before becoming a fully-fledged content management system, so blogging is in its DNA. When we consider a blog, there are a few parts. There are the posts themselves, found under posts from the WordPress sidebar. This is its own post type, and here you create your individual posts and categorize them. Once you have some posts, you will want to display them. So on the front end, there's usually a blog page which displays these collected posts. Then there's the individual posts themselves, and there are also the blog archives. The default WordPress way of setting up a blog is to assign a blog page in the reading settings, found from the dashboard under Settings, Reading. But Avada offers an advanced way of doing it that offers much more flexibility, and so that's what we recommend. So here we need to make sure there is no page selected to display posts, so we have full control. The method we recommend involves designing your own blog page and adding your posts to the page via a postcard. And for both the individual posts and the blog archives, we recommend a combination of a layout and a postcard. For this video, I've imported the LifeCoach pre-built site. And to start, let's have a look at the posts on this site. As you can see in the sidebar here, there are sections to create your own categories to organize your posts, and the same for tags. But you can also create and add these as you go. So let's edit a post to see how that works. You can edit these posts in whatever builder you like, the Avada Builder, or Gutenberg. With blog posts, they are usually kept very basic with a strong focus on content rather than design. Here they have been made in the Avada Builder. The main thing to remember with this method is that this is just the blog content. The design of the posts on the front end will be controlled by a layout, so as said, just get some content in here without worrying too much about design. On the right hand side we can see a whole bunch of boxes. You can select or create a category for each post here, and this is a very powerful feature that should not be passed over. This is the basis for the blog archives. You can also add tags in here as well. Under that, it's a good idea to add at least one featured image to your posts. This can be used in various ways depending on the single post layout, but it's nearly always used on the collected blog page. Okay, so that's the individual posts. So now, how do we display them? Let's start with the blog page. Here is the blog page in the Live Builder. It's just a normal page, with no limitations as to the layout or content used. Here there is a container with some titles and a column with a background image, another container below this with some more titles, and then there's a postcards element below this displaying our blog posts. The postcard itself is made in Avada Library. If we have a look at it, it's quite a nice design. We have two nested columns the first of which has a background image, pulling the post featured image. And then the second column has a transform value on the x-axis, making it overlap, and then on mouse over it moves over even more. And in the column, we have a text block showing the category, a title pulling the post title, a flex grow separator to keep the button below in the same spot even when the title is shorter, and finally the button at the bottom with a permalink. That's a simple yet really nice postcard. Okay, so now back on the blog page, let's see how the postcards element is configured here to display this postcard. The content source is posts, and post type is also posts, and the posts by taxonomy is set to all. If we just set this to another taxonomy, you then get include and exclude options for that specific taxonomy. In this way, you could even have multiple instances of the postcards element on the page, pulling from different categories. In fact, you can add the postcards element as many times as you prefer to any page within your site, with each instance potentially displaying different post content depending on the settings in the element. The flexibility with this method is almost endless, and there are no downsides. Looking further, we can see that filters here are set to No, and there are six posts ordered by date, and there is pagination showing at the bottom. And if we look at the Design tab, we can see the layout is set to Grid, the alignment is set to stretch, and there are two columns. All up, that's a very nice blog grid. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at an individual post. There's a top section here under the header, and then there's a table of contents on the left, and the post content on the right. And as we scroll down, we can see a subscription section, and some related articles, and then the footer. What's important to note here is that most of this content is coming from layouts. If I just go back to the top and scroll again, it's only this section here that's actually coming from our blog posts. The rest is part of the various layout sections that make up the single post layout. Using Avada Layouts, you can completely design how you want your blog single post layout to look. Check out the How to Build a Custom Single Post Layout video linked below for a full rundown of how this can be achieved. But let's just have a quick look at how it's been done on this site. If we mouse over Edit Live, we can see the four layout sections that comprise the layout, and that this page's content is coming from the global header and footer, and a single post page title bar and content layout section. The top section here is the page title bar layout section, and below this, all the way to the footer, is the single post content layout section. I'll just control click that layout section to open it in a new tab, and we can quickly look at the structure. Here we can see we have a one quarter column with a table of contents element, and in the main column on the right is the content element, pulling the post content. And under that there's another container with a subscriptions form, and at the bottom there's another container using another postcard to display related posts. Finally, if we look at an archive by viewing a category, for example, again we can see it is using a custom page title bar and content layout section. This is a much simpler layout, and this time the content layout section is using the postcard archives element with the same postcard as before to display the post archives. The main difference with the postcard archive element is that it's designed specifically for archives. With it, you don't need to set the source and the post type, etc. It just pulls the archive from WordPress. So if you visit a category page, it's populated with just that category's posts. Okay, that should give you a good idea on our recommended way to set up a blog in Avada. Layouts and postcards are now an integral part of Avada, and if you're not yet using them, you're missing out. And here's a bonus. If you make a new site using the Avada setup wizard, all the work is done for you, with postcards and layouts created as part of the setup. There are also several postcards you can import from Avada Studio if you don't want to make your own. For more information on the blog post type, be sure to check out our extensive blog documentation. I've added a link in the description below the video. Okay, this concludes our video on how to set up a blog in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.